Throughout the course, I've been surprised by the synergy displayed through the novels, through the reoccurrence of themes such as the one we learned in our first essay, which is that Canadian culture is derived more from its land than its people. That reoccurred throughout, I think, every novel since, which is probably why we read it first. But also through objects and just different themes throughout each novel. One of the more prominent ones in my mind was the trains. Um, the train that happened in Roche Carrier's novel. And it was such a big metaphor in both of Stephen Leacock's works. As well as the train that Tillman rides on and he finds so much solace in. It's little things like that which seemed to pop up and pop up and kept reoccurring, such as uh, the Eaton store in both Roche Carrier's The Sweater and in No Great Mischief. It's just things like that that I found to be very unique. I struggled to find something that connected fugitive pieces with the other novels. Obviously, the themes of tragedy and the Canadian themes of leaving home and coming to a new place. But I also found that there was a theme that connected it very vividly with uh, No Great Mischief, and that was truncation. While it may not be as vivid and as prominent as The Grove, there are themes there through history and memory that support trun truncation and its effects on Canada. I do think this theme was kind of subtle and it could have been missed, but this is my interpretation of what the comparison between Jacob and Ben means in the novel and what it means to Canada. Canada may have one of the more misunderstood histories in the whole world. A lot of people would look at Canada and call their history and the history taught in classrooms and that sort of thing as being boring. And I've heard the theme of truncation, which is presented throughout the novel by comparing the two characters of Ben and Jacob. Um, and the importance of their memories. In the first part of the novel, Jacob Beer has been act Im impacted sorry, by the tragedy of the Holocaust firsthand. He carries these memories with him for the rest of his life. The tragedy has become a part of who he is as a person. It is through his understanding of his history that he comes to progress in life through his poetry and other endeavors. Jacob was taught to remember and rejoice in his culture despite the tragedy. Athos telling Jacob, you are remembering your future is one of the most significant parts of the novel to me. For you can really see how Jacob has been molded to think of his past and cherish it. Jacob often speaks in regret of how he has not cherished his past enough, stating that Bella would not be able to find him with all of his mysterious clothes and customs. In the second half of the novel, however, Ben's life has been shaped more by the absence of a memory. For his whole life, Ben believes that he hasn't had a sister and that that event never happened, and when he finally comes to terms with it, it kind of changes him. I think this change of character in Ben is truly amplified when he goes to Greece and he almost becomes a different person through recognizing his past. And it shows the importance of how much your past can have. I think this is a big representation of truncation to me because you can see it almost in like a Canadian, in like Canadian culture where there are people who cherish their past and there's people who have not been given the opportunity to cherish their past and their traditions and really learn those. And I think it's an important thing that those people are, are given the opportunities to learn their past and their tradition because it's an important thing that everybody can share their culture and share their individuality in a country that's so vastly different in so many ways. To me, the part of the book that really amplifies amplifies the the theme of truncation, the theme of memory, is on page 193 when it says, There's no absence if there remains even the memory of absence. Memory dies unless it's given a use, or as Athos might have said, if no one longer has land but has the memory of land, then one can make a map. I think that's really significant, specifically to Ben, where his absence of his sister was never supplemented. So the memory never lived, and it was never cherished, whereas... The Holocaust survivors live on through the way people have been able to tribute them and live their lives through them and through their memory. And that was never provided for Ben's sister. 
I feel like that's provided a real disconnect between Ben's culture and himself. And I think that's shown when he goes back to Greece and he becomes that different person. And the familiarity of the scarf and the culture and everything. And he kind of learns who he is through somebody else's culture and somebody else's prominence. He almost attaches to Jacob based on the fact that he has not learned his culture fully and he has been hidden from memories. And I think that's the important part of Canada is its people cannot be hidden from its memories if it wishes to be a successful country.